stress or anything like that. It's more just writing paper and stuff like that. Well, it's a cold and windy day in February, and a lot of people on campus are thinking about summer. And when you think about summer, you think about baseball. And when I think about baseball, I think about Todd McGinnis, who is one of the Golden Eagle pitchers, and he has led our team uh, for the last few years to some, some wonderful victories. So, Todd, um, tell us, first of all, about pitching. Uh, and how does your arm feel my on arm the day feels, after a game? Oh, today, and then how does it feel after a game? Well, today it's perfectly fine. Um, after, after you pitch in a game, it's not just your arm, but your whole body sore. And uh, just it's important after you pitch just to get some, get some running in, just get your blood flowing back again. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the toughest part. Just the next day you're just, you just feel like everything just hurts. So, I mean, but and then you think about it, as a starter pitcher, you have five or six more days before you next go out there yeah. again. So, the pain's all right, but just going out there and producing for the team is what you, what you really gear up what for. What you want to do. All right, there are a lot of different kinds of pitches. Uh, tell me some of, of uh, your favorites, some of the ones that you do best, and could you show me how you pitch those okay. pitches? For me, there I have four pitches. the a fastball, curveball, changeup, and slider. And uh, most people just have three, but there's, a, there's about four or five of us that have four. But just the fastball grip, there's two, time, two types. This is a four-seam fastball, which is one you want to go straight. Mm -hmm. Then you have a two-seam fastball, which runs a little bit into a right-handed batter and away from a left-handed batter. Curveball, you just grip it like this. My curveball and slider both grip the same way, mm -hmm. but just one's released from up here and then one's released from back here. And the slider is probably my best pitch just because it looks like a fastball and then breaks at the end. So that's the one that's <coughs> helped me out a lot. And then since last year when Coach Fed got here, he started developing a changeup with me, and that's just grip just like this. And you throw it regularly, it just looks like a fastball, but it's about 12 mile an hour slower. Ah. So that's just that's a really good pitch as well. Which pitch has been most difficult for you to learn? Changeup. Just yeah. because in high school you just had a fastball and curveball, and you just throw it as hard as you could every time. But when you get to college, the hitters are a lot better, and they're a lot smarter, so you have to set your off speed pitches a lot, easy, a lot um, difficult. And the, just the change-ups are the hardest one just because I never threw it in high school. And it's taken a long time to develop it. And that's just, when you get here for four or five years, you can see that when freshmen come in, that's the hardest pitch for them to develop just because they've never done it before. So would you advise high school pitchers to start working on that? Would. When we use it, when we work at these camps, that's the first thing I preach to them is just start developing a change-up. Because okay. that's just the biggest pitch that you're going to have to develop once you get here. Is there one strikeout moment that stand, in your career that stands out? There's a couple. Um, I would say my third or fourth game against Alabama, there was a couple situations where there were guys on base and um, I just needed a big punch out and uh, those, are when, those are the moments I remember the most. Do you have a nickname? Well, Coach Kai calls me T-Mac, but in high school I had coaches call me Bones just because I'm so skinny. I only weigh 155 pounds, but uh, those are the two that stick out in my mind the most is T-Mac and Bones. How nervous were you pitching in the College World Series? To be honest, that's the first time I haven't been nervous. Really? I, I've been my whole life, I've gotten nervous before games. That's just how I am. It's just all your nerves, but it's more of excitement nerves. And uh, once you get in front of those 24,000 people, you just, no one expected us to be there. So the weight was lifted off our shoulders once we got there. And uh, you just went out there and had fun in front of all those people. And uh, I can honestly say that's probably the first time I've never been nervous playing baseball. You just played the game. Just played the game and had fun with my friends. Everybody likes to win. Uh, but you don't always win. Do you take losing hard? Is, how does that affect you? I do. Um, my parents would say that they, they always come up and after the games they'll stay the night with me and uh, I'm just not somebody you want to be around after I lose. <laughs> I don't know if it's just that I shut down and don't want to talk to anybody, but for a starting pitcher it's a little bit tougher because if you lose you have a whole week to think about it. And a relief pitcher you can go out there the next day and just completely just do exactly what you're supposed to. As a starting pitcher, if you win, you have a whole week to just... You have to relive it. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. And then if you lose, you have to, you're going to sit there and think about it for the next five or six days. So. Well, I think that, that comes from throwing your, your entire self into it when yes, you're there. And, and, of course, you take it harder. Yes, ma'am. But I think all of us take losing hard. It's just not something you want to do as a team. What is it that lured you back to Southern Miss? Now, you were eligible for the, the draft last year, and you came back for a senior year at Southern Miss. Tell us about that. It was a difficult process, one that I handled with my coaches and my family, and of course, God, um, I went to him immediately, and I just, I just wanted the weight off my shoulders, and I wanted him to make that decision for me, and uh, after a little bit of thinking, I just knew that this is where I wanted to come back. We have a great team coming back. I love my coaches. Me and Colin and Adam have been here for five years together. It wasn't, to be honest, it really wasn't a tough decision for me, and um, the A's wanted me to wait out the whole summer, 
to see how my arm was going to hold up. And I just told him that I didn't want to do that to Coach Barry. If he wanted, if I was going to go, then he needs to get rid of my scholarship and find the best player. So I just decided to come back and just see what happens this year and hopefully we'll go back to the College World Series and win the whole thing. Complete this sentence. Todd McKinnis plays baseball because? It's who I am. As a, as a little boy, I can remember when I was three or four years old, my dad's always been a coach. He's always coached me and my brother. So I've always had a baseball or a football in my hand my whole life. And just without if, if Todd McKinnis and baseball, just they're in the same sentence every time. And uh, once this game ends for me, it's just going to be really hard to figure out what I want to do with my life. And uh, that's why I want to be a coach, just so I can just keep this game in my life, especially when I have kids or something like that. I want to just grow them up in sports as well. But just me and baseball, we just we're one-on-one together. Thank you, Todd. Todd McInnes, Golden Eagle Baseball.